A city surrounded by desert streets, ranging from bazaars to slums, stretch out below the Grand Palace. Outside the city, the Cave of Wonders, where treasures lie and the ruins of ancient civilizations can be found in the desert. This is the Kingdom Hearts World Tour Series, Agrabah. We are here in Agrabah. This was the world that everybody wanted to see next, so that's what we're going to do. I figured I'd start here in like this little storage closet because this is typically where you're going to start um, in this world anyways when you're actually playing the game. So, we're going to start here. And really, there's... N I say there's not much to see in here, but... There's not much to do in here. You, you know, you'll you'll find a green trinity mark right here, which I don't think you can do right away, you know, when you arrive in the world. Uh, there's, like, breakable barrels, you you know, you can break in here. They have money in them. Uh, but as far as visually, I mean, it's kind of a run-down little storage closet. Uh, there's even the a little, like, cobweb up there in the corner. A lot of rugs, a lot of carpets in here. Like a lot of rugs. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because uh, there's one across this box. Nine on the floor. Ten on the floor. Eleven draped here. Uh, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty here. I count twenty rugs in this room. <sighs> I think that's all of them. Not sure. But it's. Looks like a broken piece of ladder. Some. Some vases. Or vases, however you like to pronounce it. Uh, are these like wicker baskets or something? Damn. Hold on. Let me get a better view. Not sure. They look like some kind of. Maybe jugs or baskets of some kind. Really hard to tell. There's a box up on the shelf. Uh, some bottles. Looks like some bowls in the corner. Goof. Um, some more bottles on top of the crate here next to all these rugs. There's a little vase behind there. It's just a raggedy storage closet. Really not much to see. Random rope wrapped up. So there's not much to see in here. We're going to go ahead and head out into the plaza. Okay, so here in the plaza, there's a bit more to see. You know, you're going to find these pots around. Uh, obviously, they can turn into uh, the pot spiders and stuff like that. Just like the barrel spiders in Monstro. It's a uh, merchant stand right here. You can see a lot of his, uh, what he, I guess, his wares, what he has to sell in the back. I'm not sure. Looks like he's selling, selling like, bundled up uh, wood, like sticks, kind of. Um, some bottles, some pots. I can't really make out everything. Maybe a book or two. Kind of hard to tell. <clears throat> and he might have some um, some more stock in those, in those crates. Uh, what's he got right here? I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. I'm not sure if it's like food. Uh, crushed up hot Cheetos. I don't know. Some vases right here. Some more food, I think. Over, over to the side there. Again, it's the textures are you know kind of low res, so it's very difficult to tell what they're supposed to be. But I'm assuming it is food. So clearly he sells food. Some more food over here. He got some watermelons. And whatever these are supposed to be. Um, there's no actual merchants around. I mean, you'll notice that. Um, pretty sure it's because, you know, the Heartless are wandering around. So, you know, the merchants don't want to be around while there's Heartless. Now, the thing about Agrabah is there's more than one way into any given, like, room or section of the map. <clears throat> there's a little carpet draped over over the side here. Who... There's a doorway up here, but who... Who's actually coming up here? That's what I want to know. Like... Certainly no one's coming up here from street level. Unless you're, you know, a spry, young, Disney anime kid like Sora. 
a lot of places in Agrabah you have to have high jump or glide to get to occasionally like this here you can you can just you know jump across these platforms that will eventually fall when you step on them another another rug there's a window right there so I guess and there's a window there so I guess this uh, is like a building that somebody could enter um, maybe there's a doorway behind the merchant stall and maybe, maybe this where the merchant lives I don't know uh, there's more windows right here I'm cracking the wall uh, it looks like probably nobody's home if those are if that's even a dwelling <sighs> hard to really know for certain the little windows sprinkled around the wall I'm going to assume those are like you know guards would be inside the walls or whatever so that's probably like guards quarters and stuff you would think right guards would like patrol patrol the walls the world looks completely different in the second game I don't know they get they go through some major renovations so rather than go through the side entrances to the next sections I'm gonna oh boy there's some heartless I'm going to instead go through this entrance here to Main Street so Main Street obviously has a bit more uh, merchant stalls it's probably like the main shopping hub here in Agrabah here you got a food stand again food I don't know what it is looks like some decorative plates I mean, maybe, maybe they use them but they they look really they look nice I would assume they're just like decorative ceramic plates or something some vases uh, whatever that is over there another vase of some kind um, this looks like another general goods store just a lot of what we saw at the first merchant stand just a lot more of it <clears throat> I like this little window cut out here. It's a lot of rugs. Clearly a rug. Hey, die. A lot of rug merchants, um, obviously. And I wonder if that storage closet is the... is. I wonder if the guy who owns this stand owns that storage closet we came from. Because he's got a lot of rugs over here. Maybe more rugs in the crates. I'm not sure. These are pretty big rugs. They don't look like they can fit in there. More watermelons. And more general goods and this. It's uh, more food that I, I'm not sure what it is. It could be apples, maybe? A doorway that you cannot go through. So maybe somebody's home. There's a window right there. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go up a little bit. It's a platform you can jump on here. To here, to here, to here. That will go to Aladdin's house right here. That'll probably be one of our last stops. And as you can see, multiple doorways up here. I don't know why... Who built this town? Because I don't know why they put doorways all the way up here where no normal person could reach. Um, normally, there's a chest up here. Look, there's even two little windows on this block here. Who is in this? This is not enough space for anyone to actually... Be there's another window on the other side. This is not enough space to be a home, or even really a building. Who's inside this thing? Why is there windows there? They could just made it a block. All right, we will go through this door over here uh, in a moment. We're gonna head back up. There's a bunch of these like little awnings, little overhangs, more windows on the walls. Another rug draped across. Oh, go. There we go. All right. Some more windows. More windows over there. More windows over there. More windows over there. There's a lot of windows here. Deep jungle. It was trees. Here it's windows. Uh, oddly placed windows everywhere that don't entirely make a lot of sense. So that doorway will take us back um, into the plaza. So we're not going to go over there. I like this window. Uh, again, who is in the walls? Like, are these homes? Are they guard stations? I'm more curious about that random block that has windows over there. It makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. All right, we're going to glide back over here. I'm going to go through this little side door to the bazaar. We're here in the bazaar. 
normally in here you're gonna find a lot of uh, pot spiders and stuff. Not a whole lot going on here. Mostly just a little fighting area. Some wood placed up in the corner. Some boxes. Really not a lot down here on the floor. Hop. Hop. Some crates in the corner. It is really nothing to look at in here. A little patchy piece of wall. What is it? Is it like brick wall covered in like plaster or something? It's a keyhole here. Uh, normally you'll use that to release one of the gates for one of those like upper doorways out in um, Main Street and the plaza and heading in uh, to the palace gates and all that stuff. Other than all the, you know, conspicuously placed windows around, there's nothing to see here in the bazaar. Looks like some sort of rug or maybe drapes up there. A little design going across the wall. Alright. Back to Main Street! So here in Main Street, this doorway will lead to the palace gates. But we can go... We can just go through the front. That's what we're gonna do. Palace gates. Okay. You will not always see this. In the palace gates. Uh, sometimes this area will be empty. Uh, please don't come in here haphazardly swinging at things, because that's not going to go well for you. But since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, explain to you what this is. This is where the Pot Centipede boss fight is, um, or not the Pot Centipede, sorry, the Pot Scorpion. This is where the Pot Scorpion boss fight will be held. Obviously, if you want to force the ultimate weapon and do everything, you know, that you got to do to 100% the game, you got to fight it. Um... You can just go swinging, and the pot scorpion will eventually come out, but if you want, like, all the items, all the money and stuff that comes from each pot first, what you do is nudge it. If it moves, the pot scorpion is not inside. See, these are all moving. So I could swing on these. Nothing will happen, except for money coming out. You get some tech points. Moves, moves. This one does not move. So this one has the pot scorpion inside of it. If you hit it, the pot scorpion will come out. We're not interested in fighting that, though, so. Been there, done that. Alright, so we got another general goods merchant. Uh, again, maybe those are apples or something, I'm not sure. Another plate merchant. Some more rugs and vases. Barricaded doorway. Uh, maybe someone used to live there. Or maybe it's an old entrance to a guard tower or something. Uh, I mean, this is the palace gates. I can't imagine they would want just random people living at the palace gates. Some more general goods. More food and general goods. Not a lot of interesting stuff over here. Another doorway. That one looks like maybe it's... Maybe that's the entrance they actually use. Alright, so what we can do here is we can... We can jump up. If I can get up there. Here, we'll do this. Another pot. So what we're going to do is jump over here. Jump to this platform. Another window. Jump to this platform. More windows. Uh, you'll often find treasure chests and stuff up here. Some rugs draped across here. They're all the same kind of rug. That doorway over there will lead back into Main Street. It's a bazaar on the other side of that wall. Um, I don't think you can go over that wall, though. So this will go back out into Main Street. Agrabah, much like uh, Deep Jungle, there's just not a lot to see. The palace doors are huge. And and the palace gate, actually, like that section of the map looks way, 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 way better in Kingdom Hearts 2. We're going to be completely honest. Looks much nicer, much more royal. I'm even wondering if this is like... Maybe like a side entrance to the palace or something. Because it looks so different in Kingdom Hearts 2, of course, maybe they could they just change things, but it's like, this could easily just be like a side entrance to the palace. Who knows? Alright, let's head back into Main Street. Okay, from Main Street, there's only one more section to go to, and that's over here, to the alleyway. 
You go here pretty early. I'm gonna clear these heartless and we'll get on with the tour. All right, we're here in the alleyway. Again, you come here pretty early in your first visit to Agrabah. It's where you meet Jasmine, I think, and Jafar and all that. Some of those little swiggly designs on the wall here. More food. They just sort of leave food laying around. Anybody could steal this stuff. Uh, some barrels, a crate, some wood stacked in the wall. More crates. More strange little windows. They just put windows everywhere. A block holding down a rug. A uh, rolled up rug, a vase, some wood, another rug. Another block holding down said rug. Another keyhole that lets uh, one of those like gateways up. Of course, you can just glide across or you can jump across. You won't have glide uh, by the time you come here for your first visit. Another window. Some little pegs coming from the wall. And then this goes back out to Main Street. So it's another sort of uneventful, there's not a lot going on in here type room. Let's head back out to Main Street. Alright, so we're here in Main Street again. And real quick, I'm just going to show you where this goes, because this goes over to the plaza. And obviously, it just takes you, you know, right up here in the plaza. I'm not going to bother clearing these guys out, because I've already done that, so we're going to go back to Main Street. Now, lastly, I think that's everywhere in the city of Agrabah that we can go. We're going to go to Aladdin's house. Now, there's a few ways into Aladdin's house. You can climb this post. There's another post you can climb down there. And then there's also an entrance from the plaza. We're going to go up this post. <clears throat> okay. We're here in Aladdin's house. There's a little bit more in here. This way, I think, takes you out to the plaza. And those posts take you down to Main Street. And then, of course, you could always just jump through here. There's the flying carpet. Now, at this point in the game, which is post-game, if you free the flying carpet because it was trapped, and then... Oh, wait, no. Maybe that was... No, fleeing the carpets earlier in the game. But if you come here at this point in the game, you talk to the flying carpet. It's it's basically going to take you to a big secret boss fight with Kurt Ziza. Obviously, I don't want to do that right now. This is a keyhole. Let's loose another one of those gates down there. So Aladdin's got some vases in here, some ropes, some raggedy cloth, raggedy rug, some boarded up windows. I don't think he wants people knowing he lives here. You can kind of see out into town through it. A little ladder. And, uh, maybe it's like an alleyway. Uh, town doesn't look very nice out in the distance. It's a bunch of oddly placed windows. Just a bunch of blocks with windows on them for some reason. Can I... I see just as well out of this one. I can't even get up there for that window. Some more raggedy rugs. He's got some pillows here. It's where he likes to sit and, you know, sing his little Disney tunes. Got a good view of the palace. Which is something I think he talks about in the cartoon. Is you know, the view of the palace that he has. It is nice. It is a nice view. Clouds move. That's nice. Can I see through this window? Yep, more of the town, more of the city, which is really just more blocks with windows on them. Some vases. Uh, falling apart piece of wall right there. Some ropes. That looks like maybe a teapot or something. Uh, maybe not. Could be wrong. I guess that's like a curtain of his. That, you know, he can pull across that rope and cover up that hole in the wall. Maybe if there's like a sandstorm or something blowing through. Obviously, to get to this keyhole, you have to put this, push this uh, little dresser thing out of the way. So, that's uh, that's Agrabah. Um, the city, anyways. There's more to the world. This is not my favorite world. So, this goes down to Main Street as well. We're not going to jump through the wall and go down to Main Street. We're going to actually go this way to the plaza. And I'm going to get ready to take you out of the city and to the Cave of Wonders. So here we are, in the plaza again. I'm going to take you out of the city, to the desert. The carpet's going to take us to the Cave of Wonders. Here we are at the Cave of Wonders. Pretty self-explanatory. If you've seen the movie, you know what the Cave of Wonders looks like, you know what it does. If you've played the game, you know what it looks like, you've seen what it does. 
You go into the mouth to go into the Cave of Wonders. It's just a big, like, lion or tiger head. I guess it's a tiger head. It could be a jaguar or something. I don't know. Uh, looks like it's got stripes, so I guess it's a tiger head. So we're going to go into the mouth and into the Cave of Wonders. Here we are inside the Cave of Wonders, inside the first chamber at least, or the first room. Um, clearly the guy who did this save, I don't know who he was, didn't come back and do a lot of extra stuff and get chests and trinity marks. So just so you know, there's a white trinity mark right inside the Cave of Wonders. We'll go ahead and pop it. get an Ifrit belt out of it, or an Ifrit belt. So obviously there's normally some Heartless in here. Got to watch for these boulders. Very uh, Indiana Jones-esque. You don't want to get crushed by them. And you don't want to get knocked off into these holes. Or I guess you kind of do when you first come here, because they take you down to the lower chambers, and you have to go down there to proceed. See, this guy didn't come over here and get this chest either. That had some Dalmatians in it. Porches lining the walls, a lot of decorative designs uh, along the walls as well. I like these pillars. Okay, the thing that the boulders are coming out of is kind of like a face. The design that stretches all the way up. Some The, the eyes kind of look like they're glowing. They might not be, but they look like they're glowing. Now, I'm going to try and take you down into the lower chambers last. So we're going to go ahead and proceed to the next room. Again, watch those boulders. We're going to go into the hall. Here we are in the hall. Now, obviously, the hall is much larger than the, uh, the first room, the entrance or whatever. Watch for boulders. There's like little boulder tracks everywhere, but don't worry, you're not actually going to have to be concerned with a boulder like rolling through here and hitting you or anything. Of course, this could just be a shadow, but that's the only boulder track you need to worry about, realistically. It's a barrel. There's a little... Alright, so these fountains here, you want to watch those as well. Uh... Particularly those over there will get there, but that one's mostly used as a platform. You can get to the bottomless hall through that uh, that stairway over there. Watch the boulder. These fountains are the ones you want to watch for. If you try to just walk down here and you get sprayed by the fountains, they're going to push you off down to the depths below. Now, this was never done, this little yellow trinity. We're going to push this, and we'll see where that lands a little bit later. We're not going to follow it right now. Of course, you can avoid the fountains altogether by just jumping on them or jumping up here and going around. <clears throat> See, this is also like a little boulder track, but a boulder like never comes through here, so you don't have to really worry about it. It's a platform over here that has nothing on it. it Might have been a chest there. It's been a long time, so I don't entirely remember. <clears throat> Once again, the little boulder mouth looks the same as it did in the first room. There's torches lining the entire room. A lot of platforms, another little fountain that'll spray you back down that way. Down into, uh, you know, I can't remember what, what it, the room below is actually called. But before, let's see, where does this go? This goes to the bottomless hall. Alright, so I'm about to take you into the bottomless hall, which is also where that stairway goes, is to the bottomless hall, which is this next room. So I'm going to go in there, and I'll come back in here, and then I'll show you where that actually takes you. Here we are in the bottomless hall. More of these fountains to watch out for because they'll knock you right off the side. There's a little treasure chest on this platform over here. You can probably make you can make it easy with a uh, glide. You might be able to make it with high jump. It's just got an elixir in there. Typically, you just want to jump on this and then come up here random barrel who's leaving barrels in the cave of wonders that's what I want to know 
there's even less to really look at and do in here than there was in the entrance hall. Just more of those little fancy designs lying on the walls. This takes you down to the treasure room. So we're going to wait. We're going to do that in a moment. That up there is where that stairwell will take us. So I'm actually going to jump over. Go back into the hall. We're going to go over to that little stairway. Alright, so I can just glide over here. Easy enough. This goes up into the bottomless hall. Chest was even left right here. We'll go ahead and open it up. It's got a mega potion in it. There you go. I don't think... Oh, you can push that. Alright, you'll push that. Not sure what that does. It, again, it's been a long time since I've played this. Of course, if you've got glide, you can just glide right back over. Meow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the main entrance and then we're going to go below and then I'll come back up and show you the treasure room and so on. Alright, so here we are in the entrance. We can take this platform here down to the relic chamber. And here we are in the relic chamber. Obviously you need Aladdin for, uh, for this. So I'm actually going to go up, back up real quick. Was there a save point up here? No, there's not. Okay. There is a save point down in the chamber, so. But you need Aladdin because you need to call Abu to hit those. Another chest they got left behind. I wonder if this is the platform we just pushed off. I don't recall this being here before. I think normally there's a. I think there's normally a chest or something over here, but I can't really remember. Go into the silent chamber. It's just a bunch of chambers of water and these sort of ape like monkey statues of course this one you can touch yourself but it's already been done so no response you can swim upstream to go into the next part of the chamber stop up here Let's see okay so there's that thing we use the trading mark to uh to push off this goes into a hidden room here in the chambers a small little room. Alright, so we're going to touch this. Which opens up those doors for a little chest. And I know what that room is. We'll come back to it in a moment. Because actually you get to that room, I think, through swimming from swimming through here. Yep. See, this is the room you would normally come to and those doors would have been shut. It would have been like a, a wall. And you would have hit, you'd hit that pillar with like fire. Thus allowing you to move forward through the Cave of Wonders. And, you know, because it would have played, like, a little cutscene showing Jafar and all that stuff. This stairway will go back up to the hall. Alright, we came up that stream. We're going to go through this doorway into the dark chamber. This is where the save point is. I'm actually going to switch one of the guys out for Aladdin. Let's switch Goof out for Aladdin. See, a lot of treasure chests were sort of left here. A torn page. Wow, this guy didn't even complete the 100 acre wood. So that also goes back up to the hall right there. If you don't have glide and you go to like that side, you're going to have to jump back over here. It's just easier to glide. Let's go into the relic chamber. See, this is where we would call. Which is what we're going to do. We're going to call. Abu's going to touch the little gem because he's a greedy little shit. And then the stairs come down. Allowing us to go into the dark chamber. Where there's a treasure chest right here. That the original owner of this save didn't get. And of course we can swim upstream into another part of the chamber. It's really just a big maze. You're going to go to a lot of the same places over and over again. We call again, which will drop that wall that had the chest on it. All the rooms should be pretty well connected now, because clearly whoever did the save didn't do a lot of this extra stuff. They did the bare minimum they had to do to complete the game. And that's really that, so... 
We're gonna go back up into the silent chamber. That's really all there is down here. I mean, decoratively, there's not much to look at. It's just caverns and caves and water and stairs and stuff. So, I mean, go up to the hall. Okay. So now, I'm going to take you down into the treasure room. I'm clear the heartless and we'll proceed. Here we are in the treasure room. As the name suggests... It's full of treasure. Full of gold. Alright, so these are the same little faces that spit out the little fountains. These are fountains you actually do want to get hit by. Typically. However, I do believe the person who did the save originally has already used them. See, typically what you would do, because this is... Typically, you're going to come here before you have high jump. And before you have glide and all that stuff. So they actually come in handy. See, you would use Aladdin to call a boo, touch them. The fountain would hit you and it would like knock you up here. Thus allowing you to jump and platform onto this mountain of gold. Onto these little platforms. and So on and so forth. Tap, tap. So that one, you hit that one and it would have blown you up there to uh, that treasure chest I believe. It's a lot of gold in here. I do like this treasure room. This fireplace is going. They've got like straight up treasure, like gold bricks in here and everything. I wonder what those are in the back. There's like vases with like pillars coming out of them. And there's more gold. It actually goes deeper. You just can't reach it because like those are broken walls and there's gold mountains and mountains of gold on the other side. How does the gold stay stacked that high? Because that's not how gold coins work. Like, what? <laughs> that's a steep mountain. That's not how gold works. That's, that's another huge gold mountain in the back there. Some I'm not what the, sure what this... Uh, let me turn around. Hey, Aladdin. What this uh, statue is supposed to be of. Looks like a dude with a beard, but... He's got, like... Animal legs and maybe the texture of like feathers and wings. So like that looks like wings on the side. I, I have no idea what that's supposed to be. It's like a dude but a bird. I don't know. If we go in here, we go into the lamp chamber. So this is where Aladdin would have found the lamp. Now if there's any heartless in here, I'm going to clear them out. And we'll get back to it. So here in the, le uh, here in the lamp chamber. Sorry. It's this big mound. This is where you would have fought Jafar uh, with Genie's assistance. Jafar had Genie's assistance, that is. This is a big mound in the center. There's not much going on here. Some torches and like some some lights. And uh, up in the corners, you see the little... Well, not, they're not really little, but these monkeys holding the glowing gems. There's green, there's red, there's yellow, there's green. And there's red and there's yellow. And there's Aladdin. So... I don't know why they're glowing. I guess there's like a lot of magic or something here in this room. It was the lamp chamber, so genies are very powerful. This is like a weird jaguar statue of some kind. Is there one on the other side? There is not. So it's just on this side. I'm go ahead and glide over here. Is there anything to see? No, not really. Just... A torch with some faded designs on the wall. So this looks a lot more like a cavern. These look like some sorts of birds, like eagles. Or hawks, maybe. Carved into the pillars of this archway. That's the door we came through. Fancy little design on it. Some nice little designs on these pillars. On these strange blocks. Fallen broken pillar. Kind of looks like a broken chalk stick. Some water in the floor. Uh, this is where the keyhole for the world was. There's even two little keyhole symbols right there. Kind of looks like the palace, but with a keyhole over it. Uh, this looks like a fiery flame design. Same up top. Oh no, up top it actually kind of looks like 
kind of looks like tentacles, like a, like an octopus tentacle almost. That's kind of weird. There's a little image up there at the very top. Also, kind of looks like the palace, but like on fire. Another keyhole logo. Some design work around the actual keyhole itself. And in the boss fight, the ground sort of broke away and you had the ability to, well, you actually had to go down there and fight Jafar in his genie form. Which, uh, really, you're just whacking a black lamp but rather than fighting him very much. I think the Kingdom Hearts 2 fight did a little bit better. That's, real, that's pretty much all of Agrippa, if I'm being completely honest. It's a lot of... I've never really liked, like, desert worlds and snow worlds or sections of video games just because it's all... It's all one color. It's kind of bland. It, there's just not a lot to look at. Which is ironic because, you know, Deep Jungle is mostly green, but there's a bit more other colors. So I like this room because it's got these colorful, like, lights and stuff on. It's just, I don't know. It's just me. I've never been a big fan of, like, desert sections of video games or even of, like, movies and stuff. And same thing with snow and stuff because I'm not a big fan of the Frozen World and Kingdom Hearts 3. Even though I, do, I did like the movie. But that's pretty much all of Agrabah. There's surprisingly even less to look at in Agrabah than there actually was in Deep Jungle or Wonderland. Far less than there was to look at in Traverse Town or even Destiny Islands. Um, the only other, like section that you can visit that's not part of the main story is the boss fight with Kurt Ziza and it's just a bunch of pillars and desert that's really it so I'm I'm not gonna bother going and doing that just because it's it, it's so unnecessary it's just desert dunes and pillars that you know block off the battle area so that's Agrabah probably not the most entertaining world tour I've done thus far but it was one that was going to have to happen anyways. So if you like these world tour videos, again, please leave a comment and hit the like button because that helps more than you could possibly imagine. Helps get the video out to more people. The more people that hit the like button, the more people that see it. Um, share it. Share the video. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it in uh, discords that you're a part of. Whatever. Um, I really appreciate those of you who come out and watch these videos. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next video.